There's a very large number of features and options that go into creating an animation in SOLIDWORKS, and even though you can create pretty attractive ray-traced renders of animations in SOLIDWORKS, despite it not being an animation-focused software, we'll only cover the very basics of motion studies today. This specifically means that 1. The interaction between bodies, like for example the interaction of two mated gears, and 2. More complex motion, like the deformation of a spring, will be covered in separate videos linked below. We will be putting together an assembly with these components, adding the necessary mates so that the assembly has the capability to move as the actual mechanism would, and we will learn how to create a short animation video with a moving camera angle, and movement animations including explode and collapse animations, and not just at an animated exploded view level like we did a couple videos ago. Link below in case you haven't watched that video yet. So let's begin by putting these components together. We create a new assembly while having all four components open in SOLIDWORKS so that they show up in the part slash assembly to insert window on the left. Click on the push pin to keep the window showing and bring in the horizontal rail first so that this component doesn't move and serves as a reference for every other part. We bring in the shaft, then the vertical rail, then the stage and hit the green check mark. Creating mates, we make the shaft go through the hole of the horizontal rail, temporarily center the cylindrical portion of the shaft by manually moving it through the rail, and adding a concentric relation between the spherical surfaces of the stage and the shaft. Since the stage can still move pretty irregularly and even rotate, we continue with a parallel mate between the top surface of the stage and top surface of the first rail, a concentric one between the vertical rail and the vertical rod of the stage, we set the distance between the two guide rails to be 2.6 inches, and we line up the two guide rails on the x-axis by using coincident planes. The last step is to bring up the vertical guide rail a decent amount, so that it's mostly centered as the mechanism moves. By moving the stage up and down, we see how part of the mechanism works, but by rotating the shaft, we better understand that if a motor was connected on the keyed end of the shaft, the stage moves up and down as it slightly rotates back and forth. Let's start by creating an exploded view of the components. I'll go pretty fast here since we've covered this in a previous video, so make sure to check out that link to that video if you haven't watched it already. We bring the vertical guide rail down and to the right, bring out the stage out of the spherical bearing socket, and we pull the shaft out of the horizontal guide rail. Now, we know that we can watch an animation of the collapsing or expanding of the assembly by right-clicking on the assembly item on the left pane and selecting either Animate Collapse and then closing the animation window, right-clicking on the assembly again and selecting the Animate Expand option. Of course, you can always record your window screen with a screen recording software as soon as you hit the Animate Expand or Collapse options, but this is not an ideal way to communicating or saving your assembly. To actually create an animation, we will go to the Motion Study 1 tab at the bottom of the screen. The main section of the new pane that pops up will show us the timeline of our animation. The black rhombuses are the keyframes or simply keys. They are like a snapshot of what you want to see at a specific point in time during your animation. SOLIDWORKS will connect the keys automatically with smooth transitions and we will learn more about this transition later, link below. The list on the left will show what the key is modifying. For example, we can go to second 2, move the stage down a little, and you can see how the stage assembly itself changed and therefore a new key was created. Notice that the green and yellow transition segments were also created. These refer to the smooth transition I just mentioned. If we hit the Calculate Motion button, we see how the mechanism went from the first frame to the configuration we created at second 2 in an animated fashion. We can go to second 6 and move it to a new position, and now the full animation will go from the initial position to the one we created at second 2, followed by the animation from second 2 to 6. Now, you might also want to pan the camera or zoom in as your assembly moves, so that you can focus on a specific component and show its function. The most basic and easy way to do this will be to right-click on the Orientation and Camera's Views icon and deselect the Disable View Key Creation. This means that at any specific point on the timeline, if you move the camera in any way, the new view will create a new key, which again SOLIDWORKS would get to using a smooth transition. 
We go to time 6 seconds and as soon as we zoom in and maybe even rotate the camera, a new keyframe is added and an animation segment is created. We calculate the motion to play the animation and we see how the camera shifts. From here, we can learn about the animation wizard, which in this case can be helpful for, for example, show the exploded view animation. We click on the animation wizard icon, we select the explode option, and in the next screen of the window, we can choose when the animation will start, in this case the end of the animation we have created so far at time 6 seconds, and we can modify the duration of the exploded animation, for example another 7 seconds. After clicking finish, we see that the timeline has added all the necessary motions of the different components to create the exploded animation we saw when using the animate explode option from before. Except in this case, we had the chance to specify a duration value and make it part of a larger animation sequence. Let's quickly add a collapse animation to the end of our timeline to bring our mechanism back together. We click on the animation wizard icon, we select collapse, we add this animation to second 13, and we make the collapse animation 2 seconds long. Now that the mechanism is back to its original assembly, we'll learn about adding motion without actually moving the components to a new position. If we wanted to simulate the presence of a rotating motor at the keyed end of the shaft, we move to a later point in time in the timeline, and we can use the motor icon to bring in a left pane that provides several options of motion. First, either a rotary motor or an actuator. In this case, we'll use the rotary motor, and we will select the face that is perpendicular to the vector of rotation. In other words, the plane on the surface that is going to rotate. Under the motion section, we see that we have different options on how this component is going to move. Constant speed, oscillation, data points, etc. In this case, since a full rotation of the shaft will create the entire motion that this mechanism is meant to undergo, we'll use that. We set the revolutions per minute to 60, so that there is one entire rotation every second, and we hit OK. Now, these motors assume that they'll be connected and running the entire time throughout the animation. So if we want to keep everything we have so far, and only have the motor come in when the collapse animation ends, we can drag the key that corresponds to the rotary motor from 0 seconds to 15 seconds. When we calculate the new animation, we will have everything we needed. Just to finalize this video, let's look at the data points option in the motor menu. Let's create a couple of camera angles so that the animation up to this point is smoother, and after doing this, let's position the camera so that we can more clearly see what the data points options do. When we click on the data points option, we see that we can create a table of values. Time on the first column, and the value of velocity on the second column. In this case, since it's a rotating surface, the value will be degrees per second. Degrees per second if the y value is to be velocity, or simply degrees if we choose displacement. Let's add a couple of data points to see that by default, SOLIDWORKS will use a cubic spline to smooth the motion. You can play with the other options, like linear for example. We click OK, and move the keys in the timeline correspondingly to allow the data points we created to exist on it. We drag the initial time to the end time, so that only one blue key exists on that row, move to the end time on our timeline, right click and hit the off option. We do this for the first motor as well, so that that first motor stops before the second motor begins. And that's it. When we calculate the motion once more, we'll have every motion that we added, so that the function of our mechanism can be conveyed more easily to others. We'll learn how to create a nice ray traced render version of this animation, but for now, and to end this lecture, we'll go to the save animation icon, we select where we want to save it, the movie type we want, the resolution we want the video to be, and most importantly, the frame rate, so that it's not a super janky stuttery video. So set this to either 60 for a decently smooth playback, or 30 at the very least. And done! After letting SOLIDWORKS recalculate the motion study, and go over that motion study frame by frame, while saving a video file, we can go to the folder where the video file was saved, and we can play it, send it to others, and even edit it, recording a brief explanation over it. The links to the other lectures of the SOLIDWORKS course are found in the description below, so make sure to check them out, as well as the playlists to the other engineering courses, also down below. Thanks for watching.